For Krima Media in Johannesburg, this is Sane Lameni. Joining me today is Tando Pato to discuss her book titled On the Rocks, Memoir of a High-Functioning Alcoholic. This book details your struggles with uh, alcohol addiction. Why was it important for you to write this book? And when did it occur to you that you had alcohol addiction? I started writing the book in November 2020, when I was six months sober. And I had been in discussions with the publisher, Melinda Ferguson. Mm. Um, for a couple of years about writing, possibly writing a book, but we didn't know what the subject matter would be. And then in 2018, I approached her and I said, I, I, I know what um, I'm going to write about. I have a problem with alcohol, but we were both cognizant that the, the book could only be written once I was sober. So I started writing in November 2020. As I detail in the book, the discovery that I had a problem was a, a lot, very long journey. It wasn't like an aha moment that hit me. 2016, I realized that my drinking, I had a toxic relationship with alcohol. Um, and so in 2017, I decided to take a break for a year from drinking. And in that year, I went to see a therapist. And in therapy, we started discussing things. And one of the things was my drinking. She said to me, you know, you may not be drinking now, but the reason why you drink so heavily is because you suffer from anxiety and you're actually a high functioning alcoholic. So, you know, alcohol is a, alcoholism is a spectrum. And on the spectrum, you fall on the high functioning side. So that was the first time um, it, I, it had sort of been vocal vocalized and identified and and though i knew i was uh, you know i was a high functioning alcoholic in 2017 i went back to drinking in 2018 i thought i could moderate or manage it and then i was diagnosed with cancer and then it was just a snowball effect until i quit in 2020. lockdown uh, brought many changes uh, in your life especially when you had to leave Joburg and to stay with your mother is it fair if I say that it also saved your life? Definitely. I'm very open about that. Uh, lockdown for me was a blessing. So I moved to Cape Town for a job um, and I lived with my mother. And then lockdown happened. And my mother was very, you know, she did not like my drinking. She was very open about it. So um, I'm like, if I had been in Joburg, I would have gone to macro with everybody else and stocked up on cases and cases but i couldn't do that because i was my mother so that's you know i bought three bottles of wine i drank them over weekend and after that i was like okay this is the end so yeah lockdown <laughs> definitely helped me um because mm. you know you're away from people you're away from social yeah. situations you're isolated with getting sober it's it's like building a muscle you need to get more and more days and more and more months under your belt and work through because the first six months is absolute torture you're using your willpower and you're working through your anxiety and you're trying to find out why you're drinking you're doing a whole lot of things at the same time and it's very easy to to fall off in that period it's very easy to fall off anyway at any time but for me it was very important to cement those six months after the six months I was like okay I'm I'm doing this this is happening and then after the first year it was like oh I did a year wow okay so then it becomes easier you say that in the book there were times when you were embarrassed to take out your trash because it had a lot of bottles tell us about that you live in, in, in complexes or apartment buildings and they're communal trash areas. So you have to carry your, your trash past your neighbors and, and mine would be tinkling with bottles and going, gong, 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 gong. you don't worry, like, oh my God, goodness, are the, do the neighbors see this? You know, are they judging me? But uh, through all your trials and tribulations, Tando, what I, I, I got from the book was the support that you received from your family as well as your friends, especially when you were diagnosed with breast cancer. Can you please briefly share how that support made it easy for you to go through that time? Look, I think 
my family, I, I'm very lucky to have a solid circle of friends and a very supportive family. And the minute, you know, I, I was diagnosed and I told, you know, everybody rallied around me. But I don't think I let anybody in to what I was really feeling which is why I continue to drink. When you're diagnosed with cancer, it's not just the diagnosis, it's what happens after. You know, so you're diagnosed, you have, and you have to make a lot of life altering decisions very, very quickly. So I just, as I say in the book, I just went into, you know, super girl mode. And I, I switched off my, my emotions. And my, my friends and my family tried to be there, but I didn't really let them in, in terms of, the turmoil and the anxiety I was feeling. There is a time in the book where you attempted uh, to stop. You you are seen in the book uh, trying to join the AA meetings and then you don't go back. Why was it so difficult? Getting sober is a process and trying to find a method to get sober is a process. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you go to those AA meetings, it is you're trying to find people who you can relate to, um, you know, like, and, and for me, it was trying to find black people, people I could relate to people I could feel comfortable with sharing. And so it was, you know, on, on my therapist's advice, it was like shop around, go to as many groups as you can until you find your tribe. It's like looking for a good therapist. You know, you don't necessarily go or a doctor. You don't go to the first one you see. Mm. You have a couple of sessions. You might be like, mm, I don't vibe with this person and go to another one. And it's the same case with, with finding an AA group. So I tried AA and I never really gave him a chance. And I knew I'd have to keep attending meetings, but I wasn't ready to get sober. The, you know, being sober is, is, is a decision you have to make every single day. And you have to wake up and make the commitment and see the day through and do whatever you can to stay sober. And I think at that stage, I just wasn't ready to make that commitment, which is why I dropped in and out of groups. My, my sobriety attempts were so lackluster. You wasted a lot of money. I don't know if you've realized that <laughs> on alcohol. Uh, do you think that you were going to be in the same predicament uh, if you were not uh, managed? I don't know. I can't say. You know, uh, I was living my best life, enjoying myself. And mm. yeah, drinking, but drinking is expensive. Do you mm. know what I mean? It's, it's not a cheap, uh, it's not a cheap exercise. And, and, you know, and also depending on how often you drink, where you drink, etc you know it does add up you know I, I had an app a recovery app and it, it and i put in how much i spent on alcohol a day and i mean when i see how much i've saved i'm like wow <laughs> and tell us about at the time when you had to now come back to Joburg to see your friends after you had we were staying with your mom in cape town and being sober how were you received with open arms a lot of the times, but I think it was a bit awkward because people didn't know what the etiquette is. So can we drink in front of you? Is it okay? Are you going to be comfortable? Are you going to be uncomfortable? So I've had to tell people it's okay. If I feel uncomfortable for any reason, I'll let you know, or I'll just leave. I think it's also, I've changed. I don't necessarily go out for long boozy lunches or anymore or things like that I, how i hang out with people has changed also i was comfortable to come back to Joburg at that point I, I i was comfortable in my sobriety i knew that i i trusted myself to sustain it and i have sustained it what are you hoping people will take after reading your book Tando? there are a whole lot of things i hope people will take i i i I wrote the book because when I was going on my server journey, I, I was looking for, uh, there's a whole section in called quit lit or sober lit. Mm -hmm. And it's dominated predominantly by white women. Mm -hmm. And I was looking for black women's stories. I was looking for high functioning alcoholic stories. I, you know, um, so it's, it's a story, I think, of the struggles that we, people are going through, how, why it's so hard to quit, you know, battles with mental health, and hopefully, you know, showing that there is 
you know, a light at the end of the tunnel, but there's a lot of internal work that you have to do on yourself. And if you don't become sober and just sort of relax, you're constantly improving yourself, working on yourself. There was Tando Pato in conversation with Polity about her book titled On the Rocks, Memoir of a High-Functioning Alcoholic.